So I'm here with my new Laguna bandsaw. And a lot of people have asked me about it and asked me to do a tutorial or an overview. So I thought that's what I would do today. And it makes it more sense for me to do an update now when Laguna has become a sponsor of my channel. Well, using this bandsaw has made me realize that I need a set of procedures, like a gentle reminder for myself uh, of what to do before and after using the bandsaw. Now, my old bandsaw is much smaller. It only has like a three inch capacity as opposed to this one, which is much bigger. But I've become a little lax with uh, checking steps and making sure everything is in place with the old ones. So uh, I need to correct that now when I'm working with a much more substantial unit. You may notice that I have a checklist. So the checklist is to make sure that I remember to do certain things. First of all, clean. Make sure there's no sawdust anywhere that will you know, prevent getting a clean cut. Secondly, make sure I have the appropriate blade on here. Most people tend to leave the same blade on all the time, like a half inch blade. And while it's fine for most situations, sometimes you might want to do something where you need a finer blade or a rougher blade. And it's a good idea just to be mindful of what blade is on there currently and see if it fits with whatever you're doing or if you need to change it blade tension and this is one of those things that most people tend to ignore and that I always ignored before on my small bandsaw as well mostly because it was really annoying to kind of see what was going on so I just left it but on this model here it's really easy uh, to alter there's this little window here and then this little gauge here where it, you can see what size blade you have and you can raise or lower um, the blade tension based on that. Blade guides. Now the blade guides are these guys right here and they make sure that the blade is aligned as you cut. They kind of keep it in place. Now there is a set of blade guides here and then there's one under here as well. And in order to get to these under here you remove the insert plate and then you can uh, adjust them from there. Last but not least, plug in. So I keep the bandsaw unplugged when I'm not using it. And you can see right here that it's not lit. When it's plugged in, it shines green. So I just like to keep it unplugged when I'm not using it. So make sure to plug it in before using. Then when I have done my cuts after. So first, unplug. So you don't deal with the bandsaw when it's plugged in. Secondly, release the blade tension, which we tightened before we cut, but you want to make sure you release the blade tension after each time you use the bandsaw so that it doesn't stay all tight. Very easy to do, you just have to make sure you remember to do it. Last but not least, clean. Remove sawdust, any wood that's been stuck, just make sure it's ready for a fresh new start. So some of you guys might remember that a couple of videos back I made a mallet out of a walnut log. So I chopped it off with a hatchet and then I put it on the lathe and it was a lot of fun but it was also a lot of work. But now with this bandsaw I was thinking about how can I do that a little easier this time uh, and not have to do it by hand. So that made me think about a jig. So the really tricky part when you're cutting something uneven, like a log or an uneven piece of wood, is that there's no flat surface to register it against. Imagine if I want to cut this here. Um, well, it would go through and then it would lean and it would very easily catch the blade at a weird angle and it would kind of get caught. Uh, it would not be a good idea to do that. What I need is a smooth surface to ride it on. I can secure this higher up so it's completely floating and drive this through. So I got this in position now and I'm going to drill in and screw in the log. Okay, so I have my slab now. Beautiful one and a half inches. Now the next step is to square up the sides and I can use this jig to do that as well. 
So I use two inch screws here, uh, but if you use smaller screws, you could make another slab. I have to make sure that I don't go too far in or else I'll hit the screws. So keep in mind that this is not a complete jig. I just threw this together and I think it's really cool, but uh, maybe I'll have a build video once I've kind of perfected it. So now when this is attached to this board here, I can just put this in the tracks and ride right through and get a nice clean cut. So you might have noticed that I did not have my blade guard down. That's because it wasn't on the list. Now I'm gonna unscrew this and do a cut next to the fence. So now you can see that I've taken these pieces off from the log and I have turned it into a beautiful milled up piece of walnut. To finish to square up these edges though, I think I would do that cutting it on the miter saw or with a cross cut jig on the table saw. Or you could use like a, make a cross cut jig for the band saw, which I might do in the future. Actually, there's a couple of jigs that I'm thinking about that would be really cool to make for the band saw. One of which I will do soon. Uh, I'm gonna make a circle cutting jig because really think about making a disc sander and then I need a big circle for it. And I think that would be awesome to cut on the band saw. And of course, this jig I like to improve upon that I just used for this. Because uh, I think that's really cool as well, that you can then cut weird things, logs and things that are not square, and basically mill them up uh, using this method. So that's really cool. In fact, it'd be cool to finish that jig because I just happen to have access to a couple of really cool pieces. This is maple. Uh, and this is a really big piece. And I was just playing with this concept before and I squared up some uh, maple, basically smaller pieces of this, and look how beautiful they are. They basically look very similar to this before this, I got them to this stage. So that is pretty awesome. So I guess now when I have this large band, so it's really making me think about a whole bunch of new ways to use it that I hadn't thought about before. I mean, the capacity here is just so great that you can, you know, do big pieces and, and without any issues. Over the next couple of videos, I'm going to be exploring more jigs, more concepts, and just various ways to use uh, this bandsaw. So if you can't acquire one of these, I highly recommend it.